You never know who to trust on all my children. Hey, we have staff for that, you know. Well, uh, don't tell them I'm encroaching on the territory. Denise left my head. Oh, who is it for anyway? A patient. Oh, no kidding. Which one? Bob Green. Bob Green. Isn't uh, his room that way? I'm just stashing it for now. Stashing it? All right, here's the thing. It's an experimental treatment I'm trying, and the fewer people know about it, the better. People like Boardman. Right. So what's the treatment? It's an infusion of trians M12 with some immune boost in herbs. Oh, that is experimental. Still, it could keep Green alive long enough for us to figure out how he got that way and what to do about it. Well, that would be great, but just make sure Boardman doesn't find out. I have a feeling he's not going to authorize it. He didn't. Doing it anyway? I'm doing what's best for my patient. Well, does Eve know about this? I mean, you're treating him together. We've discussed it. And she agrees with you? I'm acting alone here. No one's career is at risk. Except All right. yours. I can deal with that. Besides, Eve's got her own problems. Excuse me. You should have gone with me. It is a beautiful day out there. Really? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> nice walk, huh? Oh, gorgeous. You know, I think I'm finally starting to get used to this kind of weather. You know, it's beautiful. It's just a little bit nippy out there, and it just seems like the leaves are starting to change really nicely. Everyone seems to be in a good mood. Even Sigmund's in a good mood, if ducks can have good moods. But I think they can. You know, he is so in love with his little lady friend. You should see them out there quacking and paddling around. Kind of reminds me of two other lucky ducks I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Eve, I listen. know. OK, wait, I know. I'm being a little bit silly. But I'm just so happy and relieved. You know, my insecurities were for nothing. And every time I look at this brand new, beautiful ring, I'm gonna think of that. Although, is it antique? It kind of looks like it has Listen, a little bit of Listen about that ring, thing. Eve. I know, you didn't give it to me just to make me feel better. It means that even though we haven't been able to spend that much time together, you're still thinking about me, and that means the world Eve, to me. Eve, please, please, just stop. Listen to me. Please. What? I have something to tell you. I should have told you last night. What? That ring. It wasn't for you. What? Well, I don't, uh, I don't understand. That ring belonged to Grace. Right. You should have told me last night. Here, take it. Eve, I'm sorry. It was wrong to let you go on thinking that it was yours. It's just when I saw how happy it made you, I didn't have the heart to disappoint you. <laughs> what, you, so you waited until after I made an idiot out of myself to disappoint me? Eve, Eve, Eve please, just try and understand. You were so worried about us last night. And then you find this ring, and you made so much out of it. I mean, all of it was true. It may have been for the wrong reasons, but everything was wonderful again. We were OK. When I saw the look on your face, I just, I just couldn't tell you, not at that moment. I am, I guess, 
I can understand that. But the question is, what are you doing with a ring that belonged to Grace? This was Grace's engagement ring. Oh. She gave it back to me the night, the night that she died. Her engagement ring? Yes. I, I have one more question for you. Why do you still have it? Tell that cook to learn how to make an omelet. Just because this dump is in a hospital, he doesn't have to get us all admitted. Well, well, someone's in a good mood this morning. You would be too if you had my job. Let me guess. Dr. Duguid giving you grief again. Nothing I can't handle. Still trying to play miracle worker with that Mr. Green, I bet. Not if I have anything to say about it. So, you ready for the big performance? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> now, sure you don't mind doing this? Are you kidding? I haven't had a role this meaty since Maggie in the Garfield High production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know I was getting an experienced actress. Oh, there's a lot you don't know about me. Well, I'd love to change that. Hey, you guys, try the coffee? Hey, Louise, yeah. how are you? I would like to wring the neck of the nutcase, whoever it is, that started the whole HIV panic. No kidding. One more call from an hysterical family member? It just seems to be getting worse. Well, I have a feeling it'll all be over very soon. Well, it can't be soon enough for me. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <sighs> no, thank you. This thing better work. It will. It has to. Hey. Hey. All right. Hey. <clears throat> all set. Operation Bus Courtney is a go. Uh, is she still picking me up from school? Yeah, she's picking him up, and she's bringing him in for his checkup. While he's with the doctor, I bring her in here to the coffee shop. Just the way we planned it. Well, what if she won't go with you? Yeah, the days when she'd follow you anywhere are long gone, bro. <laughs> uh, I'll tell her I've got some insurance forms we need to go over. Not bad. Ah, you've had experience <laughs> in acting, and Frank's had experience in weaseling. <laughs> hey, you want my help or not? Wait, I thought I was helping you. Oh, right, right. Okay, all right, so, listen. Courtney's in here. We're sitting at the table. Uh, we wait for you to take a hike. Uh, Gabby and I come in. Uh, we pretend not to see her, and then we do our thing. Yeah. What can go wrong? Nothing, provided she takes the bait. Yeah. Oh, trust me. If Courtney is the one who leaked the story, she won't be able to resist. Dr. Campbell, to physical therapy. Dr. Brad. Campbell. I'm going to check on Green. Physical therapy. Could you cover me if I get called to the clinic? Sure. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. You didn't really think you'd get away with this, did you, Thornhart? I mean, how big of a fool do you take me for? Well, that's a loaded question. I warned you not to try that voodoo treatment on Green. Did you imagine I wouldn't find out if you did it behind my back? I figured it would slide right past you. Yeah, well, I had a gut instinct that you'd try to pull a fast one like this, and I was right. I haven't done anything yet. No, and you won't, because guess what? I found your secret little setup. The enzymes, the Chinese herbs, the IVs. When are you gonna learn it's a mistake to underestimate me? When are you gonna learn it's a mistake to underestimate how far I will go for my patient? And what planet do you live on when you think this junk is gonna do any good at all? All right, let's start over. You have your methods, I have mine. What do you say we treat our own patients in our own way? Because I will not tolerate some freewheeling, new age swami jeopardizing the reputation of this hospital by practicing quackery. Wait a minute, alternative medicine is hardly quackery. Oh no, don't tell me you're involved in this too. No, I'm the only scary voodoo doctor around here. And that's one too many in my opinion. But as you know, I'm not interested in your opinion. So why don't you go take it to Quartermain or the rest of the board? Oh, is that a challenge, old boy? Yes, it's a challenge. So why don't you meet me after school at the bicycle rack? In the meantime, I have no intention of abandoning the one treatment that could prolong Mr. Green's life. You clearly have no idea who you're dealing with. But I do. You're a pompous, undersexed jackass. Now I'm not closer, should I keep going? Oh, no, you said plenty. Oh, pay attention, Dr. Wexler. You just witnessed the man shooting himself in the foot. And the bleeding hasn't even begun yet. Ian, wait, wait! 
Where are you going? I'm gonna give Green his treatment before this clown can get to the hospital board and get an injunction against me. Still don't understand why we need to sign insurance forms again, Frank. I told you there was a mix-up with Neil's paperwork, and you know these HMOs, they won't pay a cent until they have everything dating back to the day he was born. Fine. Fine. May I have that pen, please? Hmm? Thank you. You know, you really don't need to stick around here. I, I can take Neil home after his appointment. If by home you mean my place. No, I mean my place. His and mine. Look, Neil is not ready to move back in with you, Courtney. Mm, and, and you're doing everything possible to make sure he's never ready, right? You know, I didn't come here to get into a big argument, so why don't you fill out the forms and send them home with Neil, okay? Look, all I'm saying is uh, maybe, maybe you read it wrong. Joe, the ad is very clear. See for yourself. Where? Right there, under personal messages. To the unsung hero who told the world about an HIV-positive doctor treating the unsuspecting at General Hospital. If you complete your civic duty and name the infected resident, I want to reward your courage with $20,000 in cold, hard American cash. Signed, an outraged patient contemplating major malpractice. Man, they're really offering money for a name? A lot of money. Now you see why I'm so upset. But I thought, I thought you didn't care if it came out. Well, I didn't, but that was before it turned into this huge media frenzy. What? Is that my fault? Well, th this may sound a little harsh, Joe, but this is way more than I bargained for. Look, this is, uh, this is not easy for any of us, Gabby. Yeah, but I can't afford to get caught in the middle of it. Okay, my career has just started. The last thing I need is for my face to be plastered all over every supermarket rag and print. And what makes you think that'll happen? Look at Darva Conger. Okay, she got fired from her ER job and she hasn't been able to find one cent. You're making way too much of this. We don't even know if the person's gonna tell. Come on, with that much money on the table, of course they're gonna tell. So what are you saying? I'm saying that maybe you and I should cool off for a while. You are? Oh, that's great. That's great. Things get a little rough and you bail. Look, I'm sorry, Joe. I thought you would understand, but obviously I was wrong. Gabriella. Forget it, Joe. It's over. Wait, Gabby. for that one, do you? Well, the truth is, I'm not sure why I've held on to this ring all these years. It's not like it means anything to me. In fact, I almost forgot that I still had it. So if it means so little, what's it doing in your pocket? Well, that has to do with Livy's therapy. Oh. oh so you told Livy that Grace and, and you were engaged. No, I, I didn't tell her that. Well, then it's not all about Livy. It's about you. What does that mean? Well, it, it's what I've been saying all along. That treating Livy and talking to her about her past and her family and her nightmares is bringing up your past with grace. And if you think you can hide that from me, you can't. I told I... you, I'm not hiding anything. I've already told you this is bringing up some stuff. Some stuff? Do you hear what you're saying? Can't you see what's happening, Kevin? If you're not lying to yourself, you're lying to me. And personally, I think it's a little bit of both. Why would I lie to you? I don't know. Maybe for the same reason you keep shutting me out. I told you last night that I never meant to shut you out. Okay. And yet, when's the last time we actually sat down and talked? together or shared a meal together. Oh, come on. We've both been busy. We've always been busy, Kevin. It's just that we made time for each other before. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Don't you dare try to make this my fault wait, because wait, things wait, have wait. changed. No, this is not. <sighs> Kevin, 
And this is not about blame. I'm not blaming you. I just feel so far away from you. Like we're not connected the way we used to be, and I know why. Because I'm treating Livy. Think about it. She's Rachel's daughter. She's Grace's niece. And her grandmother tried to kill us. All the more reason that girl needs me. What about me? What do you owe that girl that you don't owe your wife? Let's keep our fingers crossed, Bob. If this does the trick, you'll be up in your legs in no time. Stop what you're doing and step away from the patient. Who are you? Hospital security. Louise, what's going on here? I'm sorry, Dr. Thornhart. We're just following orders. Don't touch that. I said step back. Do you know what you're doing? Ian, Ian, don't. You'll only make it worse. They're contaminating the whole treatment. I know, but there's nothing you can do, OK? Like hell, there is. Boardman. After I finish. I warned you not to underestimate me. He had no right to dump his meds. I beg to differ. You can't stop me. I'll order more and I'll start over. You know, you should quit while you're ahead, Ian. I Mark did you a favor by not going to the board. He did me a favor. He knew that this treatment could keep Green alive long enough for us to find a cure, and he purposely sabotaged it. I did know something. Let such me ask thing. you something, Mark. Is there any particular reason you want this patient to die? I really think we had her going. I could practically see that little antenna of hers at work. <laughs> Didn't I tell you I could act? Yeah. Talk about a drama queen. What, was it too much? Well, you did ham it up a little bit with that whole breaking up thing. Well, I was on a roll. You know, I just went with it. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it felt natural, did it? Well, I wouldn't go that far. You better not go anywhere. <laughs> Isn't this the part where they kiss and fade out? Yeah, now that you mention it. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys, Courtney catches you doing that, you can blow the whole deal. I'll just tell her that Joe's incredible charm made me see my foolishness. That won't take any acting. Once more with feeling. Oh, hey, hey, you guys are looking pretty smart. We nailed it. Yeah? I can just see Courtney's eyes flashing dollar signs, even from the back of her head. <laughs> Perfect. Now all we have to do is wait and see if she bites. Eve, you're my wife. I love you, and I would do anything to make you happy, but please, please don't ask me to stop treating Livy now, not when she needs me the most. All I'm asking is that you put our relationship first. I don't think that's unfair. No, no, it's not. I'm saying is that you have no reason to feel threatened. Then why do I feel so scared? I don't know. But I promise I'll make more of an effort to make more time for us. Let me. Hello. Hi, Livy. Well, what is it? You sound upset. Well, I'll be down at GH in a while anyway, so I can meet you there. OK. I'll see you. Yes, I'll see you then. Bye. Eat. Did I hear right? You think I'm out to get one of your patients? I Ian, you're crossing the line. Why don't you take some time to I suggest that both of you stay out of my business. Ian, let it go. That's enough. You got a problem with me, you deal with me. Don't take it out on my patients. The only problem I have with you is that at this hospital, we have established methods. Which don't always work, and that's the difference between you and me. I will not turn my back on a method of healing just because it comes in a brown box instead of a sterile green bottle. Then you're dead wrong. And you're flippin' Egypt. 
Hold on, I'm not through with you. Oh! Oh! Mark. Oh. oh my gosh. Ow! Are you okay? Ow! Okay, come here. Come on. Come on. Oh. Stay tuned for scenes from the next Port Charles. You guys want to pick up a few bucks? Man's got to make some money somehow, don't I? <laughs> I knew your Aunt Grace, and I was with her the night she died. Time to relax and enjoy another quiet day in Pine Valley. Right. An all-new episode of All My Children is coming up next on SoapNet. Pure Soap 24-7. You never know who you'll bump into on All My Children.